Let's go now to Andrews Air Force Base. We can see the picture. Bob Schieffer is there. Walter, uh, one of the uh, presidential uh, helicopters has just landed uh, behind the Spirit of 76. Uh, it's just now setting down. They have not yet turned off the engines. And I'm not sure that that is the uh, helicopter that the president is aboard. It may well be, uh, but it just landed here just a few minutes ago, and I'm just not sure that the president's uh, helicopter has had time to get here yet. This may be uh, one of the, uh, the backup birds. Uh, but, uh, well, you can see it there in your picture now. It's taxiing over. Uh, it may well be. It, uh, it may, be, uh, may well be, Mr. Nixon's plane. This is uh, certainly one of those uh, helicopters in the fleet, and the way it's pulling into position now, uh, I'm trying to see in, the, in those windows to see uh, if I can see if this is the uh, one... Uh, that Mr. Nixon is aboard. This is uh, certainly the spot that uh, where the helicopter parks when Mr. Nixon is aboard. Cranking down the engines now. And this is the one. This is, uh, this is the plane. Secret Service man who just uh, came down the ramp. Mrs. Nixon waiting at the door, uh, apparently waiting for the president. And here comes Mr. Nixon. I would say three or four hundred people uh, back behind the uh, ropes now uh, to see Mr. Nixon off. And uh, they are uh, giving him a nice round of applause. That's the Commandant of Andrews Air Force Base with him, I believe, is it not, Bob? I'm sorry, Walter, I didn't hear you. I say that's the Commandant of Andrews Air Force yes, Base with him, I believe, Commander. Edward Cox, the uh, president's uh, son-in-law, who said just a moment ago, of course, this uh, base has been the scene of many uh, presidential arrivals and departures over the years, never one quite like this. Again, a scene we've seen many times at this air base uh, just south of Washington in the Maryland suburbs. Now the big plane pulling away from the apron here at Andrews. This is the first time that a president has ever left office voluntarily. So this is truly a historic moment that we are seeing as this big aircraft pulls away from the apron here at Andrews. Bob, as we watch the plane roll out to the end of the runway, and carry President Nixon away from Washington for the last time. By the time he arrives in San Clemente, uh, five hours or so from now, he will be private citizen Nixon. Uh, we might recall the words of President Truman after he left office, and he left, of course, under vastly different circumstances than Mr. Nixon is leaving, but even so, President Truman said at that time, most people never stop to think about what happens to a man who's been president of the United States. The day he's elected president, he suddenly finds himself at the top of the world, where he sits for a while, holding the destinies of millions in his hands, making decisions that change the course of history, conferring with rulers and the leaders of nations. Then, just as suddenly, he is again at the level of John Jones, who lives next door. We believe that anybody can be president of the United States and that when he is through, he can go back to being just anybody again. It's not been that simple for me. 
back home in Independence, I discovered that it was not easy to assume the role of Mr. Citizen. It's going to be, uh, that was the word, those are the words, of course, of Harry S. Truman, uh, spoken some years ago. He left office in 1953. Uh, but uh, it's going to be somewhat more difficult even for President Nixon assuming that role of Mr. Citizen because he faces innumerable problems uh, in that new role. Not the least of those is whether or not he himself might face uh, criminal charges in the future. Uh, the grand jury, which uh, named him a unindicted co-conspirator in the Watergate cover-up case because it was advised that uh, to do otherwise would involve constitutional issues that would only delay the case, is still sitting in Washington. And as the president uh, leaves uh, Washington in that Air Force One, the spirit of 76, that grand jury is still meeting and could indeed change its mind and now indict him, although there's been no suggestion as yet that that will be the course. But Special Prosecutor Jaworski said that uh, there has been no deal made, no promise of immunity, and he volunteered that statement last night. Well, he's airborne now, Walter. At about 1019, Air Force One left Andrews Air Force Base for the last time with Richard Nixon as President of the United States. <laughs>